Hello everyone, welcome back to Advent of Code. It's day 7 of 2023. Uh, this video is going up a little later than the previous ones have because I was just busy last night, so I'm having to do it the next day rather than the night of. Uh, which, you know, gotta confess, I also did look at, I did read the problem statement last night, so I'd have some time to think it over in case it was some big complicated thing. But I haven't written any code yet, so there we go. Let's read the problem statement. Day 7, Camel Cards. Your all-expenses-paid trip turns out to be a one-way, five-minute ride in an airship. Well, at least it's a cool airship. It drops you off at the edge of a vast desert and descends back to Island Island. Did you bring the parts? You turn around to see an elf completely covered in white clothing, wearing goggles, and riding a large camel. Did you bring the parts? She asks again, louder this time. You aren't sure what parts she's looking for. You're here to figure out why the sand stopped. The parts for the sand! Yes, come with me, I'll show you! She beckons you onto the camel. After riding a bit across the sands of Desert Island, you can see what look like very large rocks covering half of the horizon. The elf explains that the rocks are all along the part of Desert Island that is directly above Island Island, making it hard to even get there. Hang on, I'm trying to reorient myself. We're, we're on Desert Island. Island Island is where we just were? Is that where the boat race was? I think so. The rocks are along the part of Desert Island, above Island Island. Making it hard to get there. I don't understand this shit. Okay. Normally, they use big machines to move the rocks and filter the sand. But the machines have broken down because Desert Island recently stopped receiving the parts they need to fix the machines. Oh, I just realized something. Okay, I'm going to take a pause here. Not... Not pause the recording, but stop reading. <sighs> Day 7, Camel Cards. What was part... No. Day 1 was Trebuchet. Cube Conundrum. Gear Ratios. Day 4, right? No. Day 5? If you give a seed a fertilizer. Well, okay. Maybe not. I thought... I suddenly remembered this. I had mentioned if you give a mouse a cookie... At when reading one of the titles of one of these things. And I thought, wait a minute. Is that why we keep, like, it, was that a foreshadowing? The fact that we're going to keep, you know, chasing down, oh, A doesn't work because it needs B. B doesn't work because it needs C. C doesn't work because it needs D. And so on up until we get to, like, the last thing, which is going to need someone to hit yes or no on a keyboard or something, and then everything starts working again. But maybe not. Maybe it's just because day five was this... If you give a mouse a cookie exercise itself, right? If you do A, you need B, which needs C, which needs D, and so on. I don't know. Could be some of both. Anyway, back to day seven. You've already assumed it'll be your job to figure out why the part stopped when she asks if you can help. You agree automatically. Because the journey will take a few days, she offers to teach you the game of camel cards. A few days? Does that mean we'll be on Desert Island for a few days? I don't know. Camel cards are sort of similar to poker, except it's designed to be easier to play while riding a camel. In camel cards, you get a list of hands, and your goal is to order them based on the strength of each hand. A hand consists of five cards labeled one of AKQJT987654322. The relative strength of each card follows this order, where A is the highest and 2 is the lowest. Every hand is exactly one type. Now, this is interesting. I mean, this, this is just like describing poker, right? Could they have five of a kind? I was going to say, what exactly have they done? Because they don't tell you, like, oh, prefer the higher, the, the, like, better kind, right? If you score a hand with, like, AA8A, why should it be a four of a kind instead of a two pair? Um, but I think they've actually made sure that these descriptions are all mutually exclusive. Here, two cards share one label, two other cards share a second label, and the remaining card has a third label. So you couldn't say this about Full House, for example, or Four of a Kind, because it would be four cards sharing a single label. Anyway. So this is just Full House stuff. Sorry, about poker stuff. They've added Five of a Kind, and they've removed flushes because they don't mention suits. Um, hands are primarily ordered based on type. For example, every Full House is stronger than any Three of a Kind. 
If two hands have the same type, a second ordering rule takes effect. Start by comparing the first card in each hand, so it's like lexicographical order. Um, yep, yep, yep. Um, to play count cards, you're given a list of hands and their corresponding bid to your puzzle input. Here's an example. The example shows five hands. Each hand is followed by its bid amount. Each hand wins an amount equal to its bid multiplied by its rank. Where the weakest hand gets rank one, the second weakest gets rank two, and so on up to the strongest hand. This example has five hands, so the highest, the best hand will have rank five, and its bid will be multiplied by five. So there's two three of a kinds, yeah, sure. Now you can determine, determine the total winnings. Great. So I real I don't think I've ever actually built a poker hand evaluator. Uh, I it, it can't be that hard, especially when it's being simplified so much for me, right? Hope not. Um, I think it makes sense to evaluate a hand. Well. I was going to say it makes sense to evaluate a hand by sorting it, because then if there are, like, two cues, they'll be next to each other. But I don't think that really helps. Um, detecting straights is easy. You just have to compute the delta between each... Um... each card and the card next to it and then if all deltas are either the deltas are either all minus one or all plus one then like it's a straight um and i think all of the other types are just about frequencies right so if we just compute the the frequencies of the input, where frequency is like a map from value to how often that value occurred, then I mean, five of a kind would be easy. It would be a map with one entry whose value is five. Four of a kind, there would be a four. Right? Like if we if we do a frequencies map and then get only the values of the frequency map, ignoring the keys, which are the actual cards that make up the pairs and so on, and then sort that, then we can uniquely identify hand types, right? If the list is just five, it'll be five of a kind. If it's four one, or one four, depending on the order we sort, then it'll be four of a kind. If it's three two, it's a full house. If it's three one one, it's three of a kind. For two pair, it'll be two two one. For one pair, it'll be two one one one. And for high card, it would be five ones. So I think I think that's how like it makes sense to me to identify hand types. Oh, it doesn't even mention straights? I just assumed we would have to do straights. The first time I'm reading the, I read through this and I noticed flushes were missing and I think I must have noticed straights are missing, but that was last night and I've forgotten since then. Okay, so we don't even have to do straights. Okay, great. So we can compute the kind of a hand um, just by computing the frequencies of the map, of the input, and then like looking it up in some canonical order. And then we can do tiebreakers just by like lexicographical ordering. Um, okay, let me get my input real quick.
And also, there's a function I wanted. I wanted to look up a couple of types. I can or not, the types of a couple of functions. What does sort on actually do? Yes, sort on I think is exactly what I want. Um, oh, I didn't know this. So sort on takes a list of A's and a way to convert each A into a B where that B is something that it already knows how to compare. And then it sorts the A's by the B's that they correspond to. It's the same as sort by comparing F, but it has the advantage of only evaluating F once for each element in the input list. This is called the decorate sort and decorate paradigm or Schwarzian transform. I knew about this like paradigm and I was thinking it's kind of a nuisance to use it. It's nice that sort on does it for you. I don't think that closures does that, right? And closure is the other functional programming language I have a lot of experience with. You can use sort by, but I think that calls F for each compare, like each comparison, not just for each item. Okay, so cool. Sort on is exactly what I want, and it's in data list. Um, out of curiosity, let's. Hello, what? I, I'm using the wrong function apparently. So how many items are in here? I mean, there's a lot. Okay, a thousand hands. We probably can't do this one by hand. Haha, -ha, by hand. But the parsing should be quite easy. In fact, the annoying, like the tedious part is gonna be defining the right types. Um, we absolutely could just use a character where like the character two represents two and the character A represents 13. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I like to do, which is try to define a model of the domain that I think is a well-designed Haskell thing. Uh, you know that would be easy to maintain if there were new changes in the same general domain, but like some new requirement cropped up or whatever. Part two simulates that, but it's usually not like that different. And so you can get away with fairly weak domain models, but I, I don't know, something where the compiler can tell me if I've made a mistake, where it's easy to add new features if that were a thing that were needed. I like doing that. So what that means is we want a data. Now, normally I would call this rank because we talk about the ranks of cards, right? The, a, a rank, right? Call it rank, rank two? High rank, don't we? I'm forgetting now, but I think so. Something's wrong with my brain. Yeah, cards have a rank and a suit, yeah. But in this case, um, rank is already uh, a defined concept in the domain. Right, it is the order that cards or that hands are given between hands. So we need a new name for like, you know, the value of a suit or of a card. Um, I forget, does the leftmost value in a data constructor, the leftmost constructor in a type rather is the one that will sort lowest. So we're just gonna we're just gonna write all this out two or three or four or five or six or seven eight nine ten J who knows what they could mean by J I don't know man King Ace deriving all manner of things we want show we want eat we want ord we want enum. Oh, I don't think we actually need enum. I thought enum was gonna be useful for straights, but it's not actually. We don't have to do straights. So this might be all we need. Now this is kind of annoying and tedious and like parsing into and out of this type is gonna be a bit of annoyance that people who are using just a simple character won't have to put up with. But at the end of it, I'll have something that I can't accidentally allow a, a you know, a W.
into one of my values. I won't. Act, there can't be a comparison problem where I like, oh, I, 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 you know, accidentally sorted three in between queen and king because of the way I was handling, you know, the difference between letters and numbers and where they all rank and so on because I'm deriving the ORD function. Uh, let's actually check real quick. Um, is two less than ace? It is. Okay. Oh, that's the other thing. I can just use the equal. I can use just comparison operators here, right? I don't have to use, like, compare card ranks some function that I wrote, which you would have to do if you were just saving characters, right? So it's just going to look more natural, and it's going to be more type safe. So this is, this is a thing I enjoy. By the way, why is my window so wide? A hundred? I mean, like, do I have this set to 120? It's crazy. Anyway, I guess I'm, I'm fine with it. Although, like, this is a little bit wider than I'm... Well, it's exactly 100... No, it's 101 characters wide. Mm. Anyway, what else do we need to know? Um, I guess... We should, I suppose... Data hand is a hand. Mm. So here's the thing. It's a little bit tempting, obviously, to say, look, we'll just have a list of these. There's five of them. I have, in previous years, I think, I don't remember what year it was. It might have been 2021. It might have been a while a longer ago than that. When... They wanted, I think we were building like a 2D grid that was five by five, or maybe it was a 3D grid that was five by five by five or something. And like, sure, you can use a list of lists, but instead I defined a type that had, it was like, here, I can show you. Data five of A is five A, uh, and then you get to drive like functor, foldable, traversable, um, yes, and this is no good here because I actually already have a thing named five. Um, we'll call it five prime, uh, just for this little demonstration. And then you can, you can make this thing applicative, which I did, and it's just kind of nice. Oh yeah, it was, it was like a board, a, a, a tic-tac-toe board or some, some kind of board game. And I, I said like new type board of A is a board containing a five of five of a and like now board is this type that has exactly 25 fields um and you 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 can't have a list that's the wrong size you can't fall off the end because you're not using integers to index um and you can easily like turn a board sideways by using like traverse or something like that uh, sequence a i think Yes, I remember there was some discussion in the comments. Here, I can um, I can actually go find this in my... I'm not going to remember to link it, um, but I can at least tell you what day and year it was, and you can go search if you want. In the comments on YouTube, this was 2021 day four. I titled the video, A Type That Holds Exactly 25 Items. Um, what, what other comments did I have on this? I don't know. One guy said he really enjoyed it. How would you implement traversable yourself if you didn't derive it? Um, and my answer was the first time I did it, I did it wrong. Um, so thanks, thanks compiler for saving me that mistake. Anyway, so I think it makes a lot of sense to do this again also here to guarantee that our hand type only has five things. Um, I think we should call it hand and not five. Um, now, our hand is only going to store values, we think. So why parameterize it? And why not have value, 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 value? Eh. I mean... Being generic is useful when you're defining a type that 
could be generic. It lets you participate in a lot of useful type classes, and, and it sometimes turns out that, you know, having this be applicative would be would be handy. Um, maybe we want to store other things in, in here as part of our math on, like, not our math, but how we work with hands. Um, and notably, foldable here is such an easy out. Because if you want to treat this as a list, you can just call to list on it, and foldable will give you the five things as a list. So you don't have to like necessarily pattern match on it and then treat all five elements separately if you don't want to, which we won't <laughs> want to, I don't think. Um, what other data types do we expect from the input? Ah, a kind. Um, data kind is five of a kind or four of a kind or full house or three of a kind or two pair or one pair or I card. That's seven things. Is that how many I was supposed to get? Yes, I see seven of them in the input. And of course, they're in the right order. Driving, show, geek, and we need ord because we're going to need to compare cards by their kind, or hands by their kind. Ah, a hand also should be ord, I think, right? Because I want to be able to, say, sort these hands first by this function that I'll give you that computes their kind, and then second by like the hand themselves, which we'll look at the leftmost element first. Um, so I, I think that makes sense. Um, and we need a... Let's call it a game, I guess. Well, to play, you're given a list of hands and their corresponding bids. So I want one word for this and another word for this, right? I guess this can just be my whole input is going to be one of those things. So we'll, we'll, we'll call one row of this a game, I guess. Um, data game. Do I need a game of A? I don't think so. We'll have game specialized hand. A game of hand value and bid, where type bid is int. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's just have it be. This is the only into you know like our whole program, so it's fine. Uh, no, no danger of getting confused with something else. Then we need type input. I think will be a list of game. And let's let's parse our game now before we. It would be totally reasonable. Totally, it would be totally reasonable to write a function that computes the kind of a hand first. But I think. Let's write the parser first. Why not? Those are fun. Text record explicative. We want an re. We want a. Um, I guess we want sim. Um. Does my input, what are the spaces like in my input? Okay, so there's no, there's no padding. It's always five characters, then a space, then a number, then a new line. Perfect. So, I mean, this might be all I need, honestly. Um, Uh, 
Ari and Sim. Obviously, you need matching. You know, no, no, no two ways about that. But I think this could be it. I guess I'm gonna need some again to parse. Well, no, I'm gonna use map for that. So I'll split on lines first, and then I'll parse each line separately. And we still want decimals, of course, as we so often do. Um, type parser of A is a regular expression from char to A. Uh, so let's the most tedious one we'll do first value is a parser for value value is in a sum I think it's in here yeah it didn't complain that it couldn't import a sum it just says all oh, your types are messed up. So yeah, I think that must have come in. A sum of, so we're gonna just write down all the choices here and I'm not sure what the most efficient way to type this out is. <laughs> like this is one of those rare cases where typing efficiency is actually the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's cause it's such a pain. So like what we can do, this is the most, I think straightforward way to do it. 2 to sim 2, comma, and then like some other stuff. So this is an example of like it could only parse 2s. So get the symbol 2 and then replace it with the value 2. And the question is just like, there's two meaningful pieces of information in this list. And two meaning less part pieces of information in this list that I'm going to repeat at each item of the list. Um... But I don't think there's a good way to eliminate that duplication. I'll, the alternative would be to like make this a tuple, a list of tuples, where the first element is the data value two, and the second is the, the character two. But I'd have to write like just as much punctuation for that, I think. So I just won't. I'll just write all this out, and you know, you guys can go get a cup of coffee if you want. No price too high to pay for, uh, you know, code that makes the type, type checker happy. Uh, seven, eight, nine. This is the kind of thing also that you could like include maybe in a, some kind of library that's reusable between different, you know, advent of, oops, not Jack, just J. Um, right, like, I'm sure this has come up before, some kind of card playing thing in advent of code, and if you could, you could pull this out and reuse it, probably. So there you go. I've made a mistake, it would appear. Yep, I stopped writing some, some sim at some point. Okay, well. Replace this with sim. Got him. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, I think maybe it would be better to put the new line at this point. Yeah, I mean, that comes out reasonably balanced. Um, so that's the parser for a value. Hand of the parser for hand of value. 
We could try to somehow be more general here, but we know every hand we're parsing is a hand of values, so I don't think I will. Hand is pretty easy. Hand is... Ha Wait, am I calling it hand? Yes. Hand of value, 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 and value, right? Looks good. Um, and then we just need a game, which is a parser for game. The game is simple. It's, this is a type, yeah, game containing, okay. Game mapped over a hand, and then uh, ignoring one space, and then a decimal, right? So now we can finally write our prepare, which is equal game close with lines. Got import data maybe. It parse or it type checks. So let's try this out. Read file input dot text. Uh, prepare that, please. All right, looks pretty good. We know there should be a hundred elements. What do we get? A thousand. We get a thousand. So they all parse just fine. Great. Um, oh, I didn't. I wasn't reloading. I was like, wait a minute. This isn't. This, this should be printing out our games, not strings. Okay, but there are still a thousand. Eh? Why didn't that print something? Oh, my game isn't printable, I bet. I didn't drive show there. Or here, apparently. And so now it prints out a big pile of garbage, but looks good to me. We have a hand, King Jack. Yeah, I'm just looking at this one. King Jack, King 1010, two pair, as it happens, with a bit of 954. Now, this, this bit about each hand getting um, its bid multiplied by its rank. That, of course, requires multiplying by the rank, which means counting the list, which means, well, I was going to say it means not doing it in... Um, in a single pass. But since we're sorting anyway, we can't really do it in a single pass. How, how efficient is sort, I wonder? Does it like use an intermediate data structure? It must, right? Sort by merge all sequences. What the heck is this? Merge sort replaced by a better implementation. Okay, who knows, but I mean, it looks like merge sort somehow. But it's gonna give us back, of course, just a list because that's the type it has to give us back. Which means to get the last element, we would have to like search We'd have to scan to the end to count its length. Um, in principle, what we could do instead would be to put everything into a map and arrange for that map's keys to sort in the right order. 
right? And I think we could totally do that. We could use as the key in the map. Um, a tuple, where the first element is the kind of hand, three of a kind or what have you. And the second value is the hand itself. Um, and then the value could just be the bid, right? That makes sense to me. And then we could ask the map, how big are you? And we could just... Actually, wait, do we even... We don't even have to ask the map how big it is, do we? If we get the map's values in ascending order, starting with the lowest ranked one, which is actually the order it would store it by default, then we can just zip it with the list of integers starting at one, right? And do a multiplication as we get them out of the map. That seems pretty cool. So maybe let's do that. Um, data map, might as well use a strict map. Because we don't need any laziness here. Um, So one, one thing we can do, which I think I won't do, but I will show you what it would look like if we did. We can define a function called order, for example, which takes a game, not a game, a hand of value, let's say, and turns it into a tuple of kind and hand of value. Because this kind and hand of value, that's what we want as our map key. This will sort by kind first and then by hand second. And the hand will sort by leftmost thing first and then second and so on. So it's, it's perfect. And we could say order of h is, you know, kind h, h. Um, where we would have to write a function called kind, which we'll have to do at some point. The thing about this is, though, like, A, it's a really simple function. And you can actually do something kind of cute. If you write um, this, I don't know, this is the same. <laughs> this, you know, and you don't have to give the function a name. This function is not exactly the clearest thing that's ever been written. I will give you that. Um, but it, it computes the same thing. Um, no, this isn't right. This is not right. Is it? It is right. I tested this actually earlier. So here's an example. Um, this of course won't. I just tried to copy between like Emacs and it doesn't make any sense. So, okay. Let me use my actual mouse to copy this because that's again the only way I know how to move things between Tmux windows. So this obviously is no good. Yeah, suck, though. If we apply this to, like, 5, we get back the tuple 6, 5. It's perfect. We got calling suck on 5 and put that first, and then 5 and put that second. And that's, like, what this function does. It, it calls the tuple function twice. No, once. It receives the input five and applies that as the argument to two different functions. One of them is like call successor and put that in the second el first element of the tuple, and the other is like put this in the thing. It doesn't matter. I think this is just like unnecessarily fancy, but it does avoid having to come up with a name like order, which I think is a terrible name. So I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that someday. Maybe I won't. Um, but. Um, I guess kind is a good function to write next, yeah? Kind takes a hand of value and produces a kind. Kind of, and I think we do want the actual, well, I don't know, do we even need the, uh, 
Oh, you know what? Let's do something else. Oh, okay, leave this in. Kind is undefined. Um, let's say where um, templates, I don't know, is I want a list, I think. I want a map from a list where Is this right? No, oh, this is kind of horrible. Uh, because what I want is, I talked about store, having a map where like, oh, you look it up and if it's, if it's just a single five, then the answer should be five of a kind, right? So I think we actually have a map where the keys are maps. I think that doesn't sound too crazy, right? We'll use from list for all of these, I guess. Well, if I'm doing that, I can say this, right? So if there is, oh gosh, what am I doing? If there's a if there's a single entry and that entry wait is this actually gonna be a map it's supposed to be, I, I don't think this is supposed to be a map it was supposed to be a list right yeah it was just gonna be the list um, like five. <laughs> Uh, but that has to be in a tuple because five of a kind is what we're storing here. And then if we have, this is wrong, this goes there. The list five maps to five of a kind. The list for one maps to four of a kind. The list three, two maps to full house. The list three, one maps to three of a kind. The list two, two, one maps to two pair. Do I have something wrong in my, yes. The map, do the list two, one, one, one is one pair and the list <laughs> Replicate five one. No, it's even longer to type. It was more pleasant to type, but this is obviously more homogeneous and nice. Is high card. Don't give me this parse error. What are you claiming I did wrong? Here. Ah. Yeah, so my idea is that we will compute the frequencies of the hand and get a list of the values of the frequencies and sort that and look that up in this map. Um. So the other, some other things I would like Oh fine you can where frequencies is the name of a closure function that is easy to write in Haskell but they don't really have a name for it here so I just use frequencies 
uh, frequencies is m dot from list with plus zip repeat one as I recall does that exist yeah so the idea is you're given a list you zip it with just saying one so like every every item in the list is annotated with one and then you say all right put this into a map please and if there's any conflicts just add the add the values together as a result you know you get one the entry gets increased by one every time you get an item that has the the same key um So the kind of a hand, like this, we should be able to just write this as some function composition, right? I don't think we need an argument, but maybe, is frequencies to list. Um, what do I do with that? Sort after calling elms and then oh, but it's going to come out sorted backward, isn't it? Because sort goes ascending. Um, sort by down <laughs> there's probably a better way to do that but um I, I don't even need to import down right i can just negate import data list sort by sort on is that what i wanted actually i want sort on um And then also we need two lists from data foldable. Couldn't match value with kind. Yes, well, I'm not done writing the function. Give me a break. Um, Why would value need a num instance for negate? Isn't elums? Oh, maybe that's not what the function is called. Where's my data map window? Here it is. What is elums? The value in ascending order of their keys. Well, that's what I thought I had. So to list gives me a list of values. If I call frequencies on it. Ah, hang on. Oh, you couldn't see when I was just briefly. I forgot. We're supposed to flip zip here. Uh, because... We want the integers to be the value of the list. They should come second, not first. And if we zip repeat one with something, we'll get one as the key, not the value. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, where are you? What is this operator section you're upset about on line 45? use ints thank you okay so let's test this because I think this is you know a substantial function what is the kind of the hand five ace two 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 okay I was wrong <laughs> it doesn't work 
Um, okay, that's five of a kind. A one doesn't exist. Yep, that's true. That's a four of a kind. That's a full house. That one doesn't exist. That's the same one that broke before, the three of a kind. Yep, clearly wrong. There you go, better. Yes, yeah, so that's three of a kind. Okay, and so if I said like five, five, ace, two, I don't know, six, it's perfectly happy. And if I move the five like over here, it's still a one kind. If this were a four, it would be high card. So this looks about right. I mean, we're almost done now, right? We've, we've hardly done anything. Like, I mean, yeah, it took some time. Oops, don't, don't resize the window. It's not like I'm saying we're done super fast or anything, but all we've really done is just write down some types, a parser, some functions that seem like they would be useful for, well, actually basically just for parsing. And then this one function is what categorizes hands. And now we need a way to score a list of games, right? Um, but that's basically just the part one function, I think. Um, first of all, to return an int. Um, yeah, let's zip with multiplication, the integers from one to a billion. And what I was saying I was going to make a map. Where the keys are the hand and its kind, and the values are its bid, right? So assuming I have that map, if I just call m.elms, I'll get out the bids in the right order. Um, from list map entry where entry of game and bid is kind eight eight mm, it? Okay, not quite right. Oh, I have to say some. Yeah, does that make sense? We're supposed to compute the sum each bid multiplied by its rank. This seems plausible. So we we convert each game into an entry which we compute by calling kind of the hand and then storing the hand itself. The bid is the value. Jam that all into a map, and it's gonna be sorted by this. Then we get out the elements. Now, this sort of argues like, why didn't I just use sort by? Yeah. Okay, well, let's just run this and see what happens. It, 
It's a big number. I don't have any idea whether this is like the right order of magnitude. But it's not like bumping up against the limit of int, so at least there's some hope it didn't roll over at least, right? Too low. Okay, well, you got me. Too low. Hang on, did I? Oh man, I did this backward. I was supposed to write the most valuable hands last so that they would sort highest. This might not be the problem, but it certainly was a problem. This is a higher number than we had before, so it could be right. Let's try that again. I don't even know if it's been a minute. I have to wait five more seconds. Okay. I think it's been five seconds. That's the right answer. Okay. Well, I'm glad there was something that was just so obviously wrong that I could fix real quick. Uh, anything we want to change before we start committing stuff? We could throw out a plug to do in Lambda case. I use these so rarely. They're just in the template because there was one year I was happy with them. I wanted to try them out. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. Yes. A7 part one. All right, what's up with part two? To make things a little more interesting, the elf introduces one additional rule. Oh no, J cards are jokers. Wild cards that can act like whatever card would make the strongest type possible. But J's are now the weakest individual cards, weaker than twos. Oh, this is a nightmare. J cards can pretend to be whatever card is best for the purposes of determining hand type. But for the purpose of breaking ties between two hands of the same type, J is always still just J. Oh no. Well. The problem is I've I've <laughs> all the logic in my program is in these derived instances. Specifically value. Like I can I don't know. I mean where am I depending on those? Like I'm implicitly depending on it in this comparison, which is basically a sort here, putting it into a list. And also here, frequencies, right? So how do you, uh, well, actually it's not so hard to fix kind to account for jokers, right? Because unlike with straights and flushes where like you might want a joker to be something other than an ace or, or it, well, okay. Obviously you might not want it to be an ace, but here, in order to make the hand type better, it's always correct to just put the joker into the highest type, right? Um, like, to, into the first bucket of this frequencies list. So what I could do is exclude the jokers from the frequencies consideration and then increase the first number by how many jokers there were. And then I would have the 
the right frequency count. So that's not so bad. And then all that's left really is tie breaking, right? Which It's sort of a good thing that I made the hands be um parameterized, right? Cuz now I don't have to have a hand of values. I could hand have a hand of joker value or something like that, right? So let's let's do that. Um, new type Joker Jacks is a Joker Jack, I'll we'll call it Joker Jack singular, I guess, of value. And it's just going to store a value just like any other thing uh, where, or not where, deriving show and eek, but we'll do org ourselves. Um, instance or joker jack, where I think less than or equal to is the minimal um, the minimal implementation for org instance. Joker Jack of A less than or equal to Joker Jack of B if, oh, actually, let's do it this way. Uh, oops. Let's say is case A, B, O. Does this make any sense? No. Let's say, let's just do it this way, is true. False, I think, right? Uh, Joker Jack A less than or equal to Joker Jack B is A less than or equal to B. Yeah, I guess that's true. So I want to check that this is correct, though. So a Jack is less than or equal to anything. That's true. Anything is not less than or equal to a Jack seems a little wrong but remember the jack jack cases were already caught by this first equation so whatever this is it's not a jack and therefore it is not less than or equal to jack and then if neither of them's a jack we'll just fall back on the ord instance for the value itself so let's um what is minimal for ord exactly Minimal is compare or less than or equal to. Yes, I remembered correctly. Great. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, and you know what? It turns out we're going to want the game to be parameterized after all so that I can F map into it. Um, We need a parser for game of value. Okay. And then in part two, we we will F map Joker Jack. And we'll get a game of Joker Jack instead of uh, I think that makes sense. Uh, the trick is, of course, we have to fix up this kind thing um, a little bit. Um, and it's not a great way to do it without just, I think I want to take like these two functions and make them top level functions.
Frequencies takes a little... If ord... Nope. It just needs eek, right? No, it needs ord. So we're putting it into a map. Um, list of A to map from A to endpoint, right? Templates is a map list event to kind. Oh, interesting. You're allowed to just write this where and it interprets it as this, which is like a meaningless where? Okay. That's interesting. Um, Joker kind is a hand of Joker Jack to kind. And kind is going to be very simple. Um, templates, well, let's see, I'm, because in this case, I don't just want the LMs, right? I want to... Joker kind of, what does it take? A hand. Uh, hand is, let, I guess. Why am I not using aware? It's unclear. Let um, real frequencies be frequencies to list of hand. Jokers equal m dot. How do I look something up with a default? Find with default. Um, wants the default, then the key, then the map. Find with default zero. Joker Jack J? Then freaks. Um, without or rest is <sighs> M dot elms of M dot delete. Jack from freaks, All right? Then I want to sort on negate this um, pattern, sort on negate rest. Prove B uh, let's let this be best rest. <laughs> there, okay. Uh, in we're finally done. Templates look up best plus jokers. Cons to the rest. Why is rest? Oh, I have two things called rest. Uh, frequences. I spelled it wrong again. Classic. Binding for hand shadows. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'll call it H if it'll make you happy. Pattern matches are non-exhaustive. Yeah, but I'm not worried about that. Um, do you have anything else to complain about? No. I don't have to worry about there being an, an empty list here. 
So now part two, I think, is sum dot zip with multiply map entry. And we're just gonna write the same thing here, basically, right? Uh, well, whatever. Where entry of game h bid is joker kind h prime h prime bid where h prime is f map joker jack h yeah I mean, I don't know. Is this gonna, it's gonna run. Are we gonna be happy with the result? Non-exhaustive patterns and best rest. Oh no. Oh, you know what? A hand of all jokers would cause that problem, wouldn't it? Um. Yeah, you, you warned me, compiler, and I said I know better, and you ran the program just to show me that you knew better. Okay, let's say case, so we're on the gate jokers, others of. If it's empty, we'll pretend it was zero. Otherwise, it is what it is, <laughs> a non-empty thing. Was that, that was the only problem, right? There's still pattern and non exhaustive pattern match, but now it's impossible. So this is a score very much in the same range. It could be, right? That's the right answer. Nice. Okay. That wasn't as miserable as I thought it might be. Um, how much of a diff did we end up having? We had to put a parameter on game, which, you know, I thought of doing earlier and decided we wouldn't need it, but then it turns out we sort of did the way I wrote things. I'm not happy with the way that kind and joker kind turned out because I don't know. A lot of, there's a lot of repetition in joker kind and there's special handling, a repetition between joker kind and kind. It's like, I don't know. We had to do a, a, a few little pieces of nip and tuck surgery in here to get this function to do what we wanted instead of having a, a nice clean abstraction like this with just some function compositions. And then part one and part two obviously are very, very common, uh, similar rather. And I think both of them really should be using like sort by or sort on or something instead of using a map at all. But I don't know, a map felt, felt clever. So I guess I'll just live with it. A7 part two, not too bad all, all in all. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching it. I'll see you next time.